Greetings all, Joseph Kursky here, geographer, educator, and proponent of using 2D and 3D mapping tools in all aspects of education and at all levels globally. Now my colleagues here at ESRI just wrote this essay that you see here, Explore Mars with GIS, and they describe a 3D, amazing 3D tool using the ArcGIS API and we're going to get into it in a moment, but this article describes how to use it and what you can do with it. We're going, to, we're going to explore it together. I know I've talked about wonderful mapping applications in the past, but this one is, oh my goodness gracious, this is warning, this is addictive. This will be a great resource for you at this URL for teaching a wide variety of topics, geospatial technology, environmental studies, space science, and much more. Let's go ahead and start now. And you can teach concepts like imagery, remote sensing, planetary processes, scale, measurement, and so on. So in the app, you can see the different landing sites for different landers over the years. You can even see people tweeting about the current 2021 Perseverance site and that sort of thing. I'll show you how to actually add your tweet to the map here in a bit. But looking at different kinds of imagery on Mars and thinking about latitude and longitude and how it's computed on Mars and also being able to measure things. Look at the site and talk to your students about why that site was located where it is in relationship to other sites. You can look at the Opportunity Rover, so you can click on different landers over the years and pan the 3D tool here over to those locations with just the click of a mouse or a touchpad. Fascinating to be able to do this. Wow, take a look at this. So this is the site of the Perseverance, February 2021. And let's go ahead and measure some things. So you've got these measure tools at your fingertips where it's not just the horizontal measurement over ground, but the vertical. So from the Perseverance landing site to that nearest cliff over there, you've got uh, 1,900 meters, which is slightly less than two kilometers. Look at this crater just to the south of the landing site. Let's go ahead and measure that. You can see that you could even teach about contour lines and iso lines. Wow, look at this. This is this is fascinating. Four kilometers to the from the rim to the middle of it and 713 meters. That's a deep crater and that's not even nearly one of the bigger ones on Mars. Wow, oh, this is just fascinating. And you can really get into some high resolution imagery here. Again, two kilometers or so to that nearest cliff and what was the surface like where it actually landed. So you've got some tools at the bottom, the locations, the measure, the compare, and then the share. We can also go into the compare mode right now and compare regions. Scale is a tricky thing to teach about, but this tool makes it fun and easy. Let's say we wanted to plop Spain on top of Mars. How big would Spain be on top of Mars? And you can move the location of Spain or any polygon states or countries on the surface of Mars. And Mars, of course, is smaller than the Earth. So getting a sense of how big would Spain be on Mars? So here is the outline of the country of España there on Mars. You can see that you also still have the capability of the measure tool, so you could actually measure across there. So it's it's placing Spain on the surface, so to speak, of Mars in Spain's true size. So let's go ahead and rotate over here and pick a USA state. How about Texas? How big would Texas be on Mars? Wow, look at that fascinating to be able to do this and teach about scale and then how big are these craters are they the size of Dallas are they the size of Houston are they the size of the uh, Llano Estacado so again lots of wonderfully innovative and immersive kinds of things that you can do and help your students to think critically help your students to think spatially help them to understand how we measure things on different planetary bodies so here I'm tweeting about my placement of Texas on top of Mars and you can see I'm saluting all the people that were involved in in the the mission and also in the mapping part of the mission so my colleagues at ESRI created this and the USGS as you can see in another video of mine 
have been mapping Mars, Ganymede, the Moon, Io, Callisto, and other planetary bodies for decades now. I used to work at USGS, have a lot of respect for my colleagues in the Astroplanetary Geophysics Mapping Center in Flagstaff, Arizona, and I really appreciate the work that they're doing, and so does the whole planet. Anyway, you can see other tweets in that area, and it's just absolutely fascinating to be able to do this. There's my particular tweet in that location. I wanted to put it away from other people so I could find it again in the future. Okay, so we've got those compare tools. Let's look at the 3D models that you can compare here as well. You might say, Joseph, what, what kind of 3D models? Well, it's natural features and also human built features. So let's say we wanted to plop the Grand Canyon on the surface of Mars. How big would the Grand Canyon be in relationship to horizontal distances, but also vertical distances. Wow, we've got high resolution digital elevation data of the Grand Canyon. And then let's take a look at how big would those craters and those mountain ranges and those valleys be on Mars compared to the Grand Canyon. Wow, this is, this is again, awesome to be able to do that. Look, I could put the whole Grand Canyon in this crater right here. <laughs> that's, that's truly amazing, truly amazing. All right, let's keep exploring. You've got various navigation tools here where you can rotate the planet. You also have these different images and you can read about how these images were created. So you can look at the different, there's three different ones at the time of this video to be able to look at the surface in different um, uh, themes. Look at the size of this. Looks like a lava, a lava sea. Wow. And again, you're looking at different landing uh, spacecraft over the years at those sites. Viking 2, 1976, wow. And of course you can tilt Mars in various ways. This is using the 3D viewer technology. You can use the 3D scene viewer in ArcGIS Online and look at places around the Earth, just like I show in other videos of mine. But here we're looking at Mars, of course and seeing some, some amazing valleys along with some amazing craters. Again, measuring, wow, 24 kilometers wide, that, that valley right there. You probably know where I'm thinking about going next, and that is the Valles Marineris, or Valles Marineris. Uh, we're gonna look at that here in a moment, but we're taking a tour of some of the other main physical features on Mars. Ah, there we go. There it is. Wow, look at the, the east-west this, the, the length of it, I know oftentimes we talk about the depth of this, but the length of this is, is monstrous. It's just monstrous. And it looks even bigger, of course, on a small planet like Mars, a relatively small planet. Let's take a look at uh, plopping the Grand Canyon or another feature on there. Mm -hmm. So we're plopping a mountain range in there right now, but let's see about something else. Now we've got the Grand Canyon inside the Valles Marineris there in Mars. And yeah, the Grand Canyon is deep, but again, scale matters and it is completely swallowed up by this monstrously huge valley. And again, measuring across the valley. So, wow, look at the size of, of that and then also the depth. How is this all generated? Well, again, it's the power of mapping and geographic information systems. So a digital elevation model rendered on top of a, uh, or underneath a set of images that are all stitched together, taken at various times, but uh, from, from spacecraft. And being able to do this because you've got the intelligence of a GIS. A GIS, a geographic information system, has data behind it. And just to, reinforce hey check other sources is that truly the valley that we want so check a variety of other sources not just wikipedia obviously but other sources to make sure that that's truly the valley that that we're seeking and it is and so now we're going to get go ahead and get a profile uh, across that valley but the power of gis you've got attribute data you've got elevation data or 
in the case of features on the earth, the uh, uh, water quality, the salinity of the oceans, the population density of a certain place, the ecoregions, the land use, the, the land forms. So attributes that are behind the images or the thematic layers in your GIS. G is the map part, the geography part, the I is the information part behind the map, and the S stitches them together. Now we're going to go ahead and rotate and look right into the uh, uh, the, the, the main horizontal axis of the of that valley and again seeing the, the the relative size of the Grand Canyon now we're going to do a little profile measure and wow this is we're, we're talking thousands of meters deep here and a hundred kilometers across now let's take a look at wow let's look at this we've got the Olympus Mons let's take a look at that you can see a couple people have tweeted from the supposedly the top of Olympus Mons. Wow, look at this, 561 kilometers across based on the measurement that I'm, again, checking other sources, make sure I've got the right thing uh, identified. But uh, going back to our, remember this is the Explore Mars 3D tool from ESRI with a variety of data sources showing the power of geographic information systems and of course a very relevant topic for our times because the Perseverance just landed on Mars. So taking a look at uh, the, wow, 240,000 square kilometers and, and I'm even cutting off a northern portion so let's say 250,000 depends on where you measure from but that's that's a lot so do that with the 3d viewer on the earth's surface and see you know is that the size of texas is that the size of north america is that the size of the continental united states let's go ahead and and uh, keep exploring there on olympus mons one of the largest volcanoes in the entire solar system wow look at that so you can see here 20,000 meters again dwarfing mount everest and then let's take a close look at the top of it. Fascinating, just absolutely fascinating to be able to do this. And on the left side there, you can see I just touched on the north arrow, so you can always orient back with north at the top uh, with any of these tools. But even smaller craters are, are and, and volcanoes are, are impressive. <laughs> it's not just the one, it's, it's numerous features are very impressive on the surface of Mars. And there's lots of impressive things on the Earth, to be sure. And that's why it's fascinating and also very instructive to use these 2D and 3D tools inside, in this case, the Mars Exploration app. Comparing mountains on Earth to mountains on Mars. You've got this capability of zooming and panning and tilting Again, you're, you're using tools like a scientist would. You're measuring, you're, you're asking questions, you're gathering data, you're assessing the situation. And again, remember that sharing where you can tweet about what you've discovered. So here I'm putting Mount Everest on Olympus Mons. Geography matters, indeed. And there's my tweet. As a review, remember there is an essay that my colleagues here at ESRI have written about the things that you can do with this tool. And I salute my colleagues here, uh, Philip and Arno, and wish them all the best in their future endeavors. But thanks to them, we have this amazing tool at our fingertips. And thanks to ArcGIS technology. Look at this. And, and there are things that you, you know, you've maybe have never seen before. Like, look at this fractured surface. Amazing. And we're back to the Valley's Marineris again. Mm -hmm. You can see striations on top of older striations. So thinking about what happened first and what happened next. So a crater, and then you've got a scar across that crater, the scar is an indication, being where it is, that it happened after the impact that formed the crater. Now we're deep in the valley again.
Mm -hmm. As impressive as the Grand Canyon is, it, it is completely swallowed up in this valley. Isn't that amazing, folks? Well, it's like McCartney and Wings said, Venus and Mars are all right tonight. And I invite you to explore Mars with GIS using this fascinating, wonderfully instructive, beautifully done tool. Thanks to ArcGIS API for the technology and my colleagues for actually creating this. Get out there and explore. Thanks, folks.